Hello everybody. We had discussed that cutting down weight was all about cutting down the calories. And let us look at the calorie content of the common foods that we eat. Whenever you're eating bad foods, make a habit to look at the labels. They tell you about the energy content and the macronutrients, carbohydrates, proteins and fats. And they might throw you a lot of surprises. The digestive biscuits or the cream biscuits or the baked biscuits have nearly similar energy content. 450 to 500 kilocalories for every 100 grams of the weight. So whether you're eating noodles or juices or conflicts or whatever which comes packed, just make a habit to look at the labels. They give you a lot of information. What about what we cook in the kitchen? The staple grains, rice, corn, wheat, oats and millets. Millets is bajra. And the pulses, chana, arhar, moong and dal. I mentioned the Hindi names because the English ones are slightly confusing. Peas, beans, lentils. All of them, 100 grams of dry weight would give roughly around 350 kilocalories, maybe 360, 370, depending on the little variation. What difference between them is the protein content. And I mentioned as a ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4, between them, with the least in rice and corn, maybe 5 grams for every 100 grams, with 10, oats and millets maybe close to 15, and pulses close to 20. So pulses are very, very protein rich. The energy density of all of them is same. Make a special mention about potato because it's neither a vegetable nor neither a grain. It's a special kind of food you can consider. And 100 grams of it would give you around 80 kilocalories. So it's very energy dense, loaded with carbohydrates and maybe 100 grams of it, just 2 grams of protein. So in terms of protein, it is worse than rice. Onions, maybe half of it. Tomatoes, maybe 20 kilocalories per 100 grams. And greens, oh, 5 to 10 kilocalories. So greens have very little carbohydrate, very little energy in them. So compared to potatoes, they are nowhere in terms of the calorie content. So if you want to switch over to low calorie vegetables, the greens are the best choice. The protein content of all of the vegetables is very poor. I make a mention of nuts because they are very energy dense food. Their fat content sometimes exceeds even the animal fat. Almost 40 to 50 percent of the weight can be just fat. That's about cashews and almonds. They also have proteins, maybe comparable to pulses, 20 percent of the weight may be protein. What they have is antioxidants and minerals. Maybe you can say I'm biased, I'm talking about a calorie dense food as an idea of losing weight. But have a little bit of it as part of your food, maybe it boosts up your metabolism. Maybe this is a biased view, but you can take some. And then we talk of milk. Milk, we basically differentiate between cows and buffalo's milk, although they are other sources. And buffalo milk is a slightly higher fat and protein content, and slightly more energy dense. So cow's milk, maybe one liter would give you 700 kilocalories, and buffalo may give you 800 to 850 kilocalories. To cut down the fat content and the energy density of milk, a process was started that is of toning the milk. So the fats are almost cut down by half. So a toned cow's milk may have maybe 500 kilocalories. And the other process was skimming, whereby I take with the solid content of the food. So uh, milk, if you're taking whole milk, and if you're taking toned milk, the energy contents may be different. But the protein content of toned and whole milk is same. So cow's milk, whether toned or whether whole, would give you something like 25 to 30 grams of protein for every one liter. What about the fruits? Apple I make represented with the solid food. They are maybe around 50 kilocalories for every 100 grams of it. This is comparable to the energy contained in the citrus fruits, which are juicy. Some of them are sweet or tangy in the middle, middle of it and mangoes I make special mention because it's energy dense it's almost 80 kilocalories per 100 grams of it so the energy density of the juicy fruits would be slightly more than the solid food and some like the mango kinds which are both solid and juicy would have the energy content even higher what about Eggs from the animal world. I talk of the yolk and the white separately because many people discard the yolk. Let's treat them separately. So 100 grams of 
egg white would have something like 10 to 11 grams of protein but if you look at 100 grams of egg yolk it would be around 16 to 17 grams of protein half of the protein in an egg is in the yolk so when you are throwing away the yolk you know you are throwing away half the protein yolk is a place which has all the fats that is why you want to discard it the energy densities may come down if you throw away the yolk but so will the protein content it will almost half down and the yolk has a lot of minerals and vitamins because it is life so you lose that nutritious part of egg when you throw away the yolk so you can make your own choices uh, when you want really energy densities to come down maybe you can take away the yolk but don't do it because you want to cut down on your cholesterol levels because it has fat and cholesterol and many people believe it contributes to the total body cholesterol well hardly it does or maybe very modest amount unless you're eating a lot of eggs every day chicken animals are complicated they have different parts organs lean parts fatty parts and depends how they are processed and cooked so the energy content keeps varying as a rough idea 100 grams of chicken would give you around 30 grams of protein and half as fats maybe 14 15 grams something like that so would be with pork i just make a special mention because it's really fatty but depends on the portion you are served some portions may be 50 percent fat or some may be just 10 to 15 percent fat so animals you have your own idea which parts are you eating the how you are processing and then just read it over i make no mention of fish because i find it tremendously more complicated or the other marine animals no huge variations read it for yourself the only thing is that fishes have much higher protein as compared to the fat content that they have so the fats is modest and the fats that they have are good they are the polyunsaturated or monounsaturated fat we, we consider better the omega-3 content of them is very good so it might be good for your heart fish oils also decrease your triglyceride levels so there are other considerations the energy density where whatever fish you eat just find out how much calories it has and we end up by talking about oils oil is a pure food the purest of uncomplicated 100% of it is fat there is nothing else every ml of it is energy one gram of fat is going to give you 9 kilocalories no matter what the source is so it's an extra virgin olive oil or a mustard oil doesn't matter the energy is same the oils one liter of them would roughly weigh around 900 grams so a liter of oil would give you around 800 plus kilocalories i've talked about these in terms of the weights the dry weights the total weight of oils but this is not how we eat them we prepare and serve them so you want to translate this idea so we have containers in our uh, kitchen which give has some markings give some ideas some people even have weighing scales in the kitchens so you just draw an idea how much of 100 grams of rice translate into a serving or how much rotis you can make for 100 grams of flour so as soon as you look at the plate now you know that okay 100 grams of the dry weight of them translated into this much what to do about oils just keep a monthly track how much oil do you consume in your kitchen a liter or more so if you are using a liter of milk and the whole of it goes to your body and you are a three member family everyone would have something like 90 kilocalories from oil per day but oil we also use for frying so a lot of it is used and a lot of it is thrown keep a track of that what i tell about the heated oils is do not reuse them because once you heat the oils the character changes and repeated heating actually makes it bad for your health so when you're using fries make sure you throw the oil compare this what happens outside when the same a container has the oils which is being boiled and you dip the fries and take them out i don't know how healthy is that so when you take oils you can consider about their quality you can consider uh, the different other 
parts of it like mono unsaturated poly unsaturated the heart friendliness and all that but in terms of energy they are all same i have touched upon a basic idea and given you a basic uh, translation of the calorie content of this food and how to track them you might be eating a lot more keep your own track follow them if there are labels read them and if there are known labels you can go to the internet and uh, get fairly good information so if you google the nutritional content of a particular food 100 grams the first 5 to 10 drop sites in google are dependable what i have told you is from the textbooks that i read but we read very little about food in our textbook so i just cross check and google also gives you the same information it's a fairly dependable so you plan to lose weight learn how to track your calories plan your own food to your own choice and in the end of the day it's very objective just see how much change it brings to you